Welcome to another video in the Makito series from Tales from the Jar Side. My name is Ken Cousin, and the title of this one is The Argument is the Answer, Getting Custom Answers from Makito Mocks. Now, I want to give you the situation that I'm talking about here. Many times when setting up a mock, to set the expectations on a mock, as we say, you use methods like when I call something on a mock, then return or then throw. When I use then return, I return a particular value. When I use then throw, I return an exception. But there's also then answer. And the documentation here as part of the Makito class says this allows stubbing with a generic answer interface with a value judgment. <laughs> Yet another controversial feature which was not included in Makito originally. We recommend simply stubbing with then return or then throw, which should be enough to test or test drive any clean and simple code. However, if you do have a need to stub with a generic answer interface, here's an example. And it looks kind of complicated. You say then answer and this is an anonymous inner class, that monster. About the nicest thing you could say about anonymous inner classes is that eventually you get used to them. So this says new answer parentheses, meaning we're gonna create an anonymous class that implements the answer interface and gonna override the answer method, which takes as its argument this thing called an invocation on mock and returns an object. So what can I do with this invocation on mock? Well, it turns out it has methods like get arguments or get mock. I mean, I could get the arguments. That doesn't seem all that helpful. If you look at the details of the invocation on mock class, you see it also has a method called get argument with an index and returns the generic type. So if I just say get argument of index zero, I'll get back whatever that argument was with the uh, at that index with it already being the proper type. All right, let me show you how this solves my problem. First of all, here is the problem. I have a class here called person service, and it has a dependency on a person repository. Now I could run this with a real repository, and I do. But say I want to just validate the logic in person service, and while it uses the person repository, I don't plan to implement it, or I don't plan to implement it yet. Here's a method called save people that I would like to test. It takes a var arg list of person instances and it returns a list of integers where the person instance will have an ID. That's the idea here. So that if it got saved in a real database, this is basically where you have the database generate the primary key for you for each person. So I turn that array, if you will, a var arg list is like an array inside. So I convert it into a stream I call the map method and invoke the save method on the repository for each person. See, this is the method on the dependency. I'm gonna call save with a person, which returns a person back, presumably with a primary key. Now on the real system, I'll generate the key. In my test, I'll just supply a person with a key and just get it back. Then I map that stream of person into a stream of integer by calling the get ID method on each person and then collect them back into a list. Now it's reasonably straightforward code, but again, the sort of code that kind of begs for a test. You really don't want to make sure you got that right and it's, it's working the right way. So there's save person people. That's the one I want to test. So here's my person test. And here's the first version of save person that I tried just using then return. So down here is where the test is going to be. Save people where I have already a list of person instances up at the top of this class. And I convert them to an array of type person and then invoke it. So that's how you invoke something with a var arg list as an argument. And I get back my list of IDs and then the rest of this will verify those are the proper IDs. Well, the proper IDs are going to depend on the people. And this is the awkwardness I went through when I first tried to set the expectations on the mock. So I said, when I call the save method on the repository with any instance of the person class, 
then return the first element of the list, and the second time I call it, return the second element of the list, and the third time, return a third element of the list, and so on. And this is, even as I'm writing it, I'm going, this is not right. This is, I mean, there's gotta be an easier way. I'm basically hard coding in exactly how many elements are there are and, and what order I wanna return them in and everything. Now this works, and in fact, down here, when I check the results, I'm using um, that list and I get the IDs out of the list and collect them into a list themselves. And this is a method from assert J, from the assert J library, where I just say that that collection of IDs that I got back from the service contains exactly the elements of this actuals collection. Also, just for fun, I verified that on the repository, the save method was called with any instance of person a number of times equal to the length of the array, the size of the list rather. And I also just for fun verified that the delete method with any person was never called. <laughs> so at any rate, and this does in fact work, but again, I'm looking at this going, gotta be a better way. Well, here's how you do it with an answer, especially if I stick with an anonymous inner class. So this is the kind of ugly implementation. I say, when I call save with any instance of person on the repository, then answer, and I write out my new answer of type person, and answer is an interface that's used for configuring the mock's answer. And again, there is the single abstract method. It's called answer, it takes an invocation on mock, returns an object here. In fact, in this version, it returns the generic type. So I call answer, with an invocation on mock to return a person. And I just say, well, the invocation I want is get the zeroth argument. When I call save with a person, just return that person. That's all I want to do. However many there are, if I call it with a person, return that person. And the rest of this is the same. And that does in fact work. But here's where the team got lucky, <laughs> okay? Many times there are interfaces in various Java libraries that were defined with only a single abstract method. And if that's the case, like it was here, you can replace this anonymous inner class with a Lambda expression. So this one looks much simpler. When I call save on the repository with any instance of person, then answer, and there's my invocation on mock, and I just call get argument with the zero index. I mean, there's only one argument anyway. And the rest is the same, and again, it works just fine. And that's what I put in the book, the Makito Made Clear book on, you know, for sale from pragmatic programmers as an ebook. It's, you know, get your copy now. <laughs> and that's how everything stood until I was browsing about a week ago and I read about a blog post and someone used another class from Makito that I'd never looked at. It's a class called Additional Answers. <laughs> I'm like, oh, look at that answers, And it's basically a bunch of factory methods to make it even easier to return individual elements, including a method called, well, let me jump down to it here, return first arg. <laughs> so all I have is a static method to get the first argument. I don't have to write the Lambda expression. There's also return last arg, returns last arg, or returns second arg, or returns arg at a position, and a few others. But oh my goodness, in other words, all I have to do is reduce it down to this form. When I call save with any instance of person on the repository, then answer returns first arg. And that's a static method, so I have a static import for answer to get at this, and I'm done. <laughs> and it returned the argument perfectly so that the rest of this works. And in fact, I can just run the test just to show that everything is fine and it's all there. And all of this has been checked into the GitHub repository for the Makito Made Clear book. And I'll put the link in the description probably uh, and highlight it on the video as well. So I hope that helps. I hope that makes clear to you the purpose of answers and how you can use an answer to return an argument for a function. It's something that I don't think was that well documented, but once I knew about it was very, very helpful. So. Please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe as the cliche goes. And hopefully this will help you use Makito in the future. Take care, everybody.